And it was two years ago this week that another deadly heat dome shattered records in Canada and led to one of the worst wildfire disasters this country has ever seen. Three straight days of record heat helped to fuel a fire that destroyed hundreds of properties in Lytton, B.C. That community was reduced to ash, and since then, efforts to rebuild have hit a wall. Our Nithu Garcha has been speaking with residents who remain in Lytton. Nithu. Jeff, the nearly two-year local state of emergency lifted last week, but the rebuilding hasn't even begun. The mayor says not a single building permit has been issued. For anyone passing by, it's hard to tell there was a village here. We haven't started rebuilding yet. It's, it's just unbelievable and hard to imagine. Denise O'Connor, who was born and raised here and lost her home in the fire, says the first phase of recovery, including remediation and archaeological reports, is almost done. This was my home. Yeah, we lived here for 30-something years. The next phase includes installing utilities and services. We were seeing soil remediation seemed to be going on forever, which then meant archaeology forever. Um, we finally come to the point now we're saying enough. It has seemed, and maybe it still seems, that Lytton has really been forgotten or swept under a rug. Megan Fandrich's home is among the few that didn't burn, but living here has been difficult. To get a jug of milk for my daughter, I would have to drive at least an hour on a bad road. But it was just lush green forest. The single mother looks down to where her business once stood, a beloved coffee shop destroyed. There needs to be some sort of accountability. The village's insurance provider has now filed a claim against Canada's two national railways, CN and CP, as well as Transport Canada. Freight trains are a common sight in Lytton. According to the court filing, a coal train had just passed through the village less than 20 minutes before the first report of a fire near these tracks. The claim alleges they were negligent to let trains pass through the town during an unprecedented heat wave and extreme wildfire risk. The village says the price to rebuild has ballooned over $100 million. There's no question in the minds of locals, and yet no one has actually just said, like, yes, that's how it happened. The store. The fire ravaged 90% of the town's buildings. Two people were killed and several others were injured. None of the allegations have been proven in court, and the Transportation Safety Board says it completed its investigation without interviewing residents. As soon as it starts to get hot, everyone in the community seems a little bit more on edge because there's the fear it will just happen again. Most of the work I've been doing is with the Indigenous community. Bruce Ramsey is a certified traumatologist in the greater Vancouver area. He also works with Lytton First Nation. His most recent visit there left him stunned, seeing the lack of progress in rebuilding. Basically, the village still does not exist. And I, I just think it's, there's something seriously wrong there. I was shocked and I was angry and I, and I was a little embarrassed actually to be a taxpaying person in the province of BC. Like, why aren't these folks getting some service? I think there's going to be huge lessons learned um, on how to do things differently, as particularly in small communities, when so much of the community has been destroyed. O'Connor says, especially with so many other communities across Canada already under threat from wildfires, it's important for everyone that Lytton residents get answers, accountability and action. The TSB says it found no evidence linking the fire to nearby train activity in a report released in 2022. There is an ongoing investigation by the BC Wildfire Service and the RCMP. Residents waiting for answers say without an official cause of the devastating fire, it's hard to find closure. Jeff? Nithu Garcha in Lytton, BC. Thanks, Nithu.